Namaskar dear learners. Today we will discuss about the indifference curve technique which is included in your paper Introduction of Economic Theory 1. I am Parag Dutta from Krishnakanta Handi State Open University. So in this class we will discuss about initially the basic concepts of indifference curve then we will discuss about indifference curve and indifference map then we will go for properties of indifference curve then consumers will be on through indifference curve approach after that we will try to see the price effect in terms of income effect and substitution effect so to start with this class what we will do we will talk about the concept of indifference curve the indifference curve technique was conceived as an alternative to the cardinal utility approach a number of economists has contributed to this technique over the years and recently it was Slavsky, then J.R. Hicks, and R.G. De Allen, who contributed towards development of indifference curve theory. Now, what is the basis of indifference curve? Or, you know, which is also known as cardinal utility approach. Actually, the cardinal utility approach was criticized by various economists on the ground that, you know, because it assumed that the utility can be measured in quantitative term, which is not true because utility is a subjective concept which cannot be measured by putting some numbers. So, ordinal utility approach, what they adopt, they are of the view that although utility cannot be measured in cardinal term, that means in numeric forms, but one can rank or give preference to different bundle of goods. That means they can prefer one bundle of goods as compared to another bundle of goods. So based on their preference schedules, one can draw a indifference curve or we can derive the indifference curve. Now, when you are talking about the ordinal utility approach, it is basically the main technique is indifference curve and indifference schedule. Now, what is indifference curve? In simple language, indifference curve is a locus of, or you can say, combination of points. Points means the combination of two commodities that gives same level of satisfaction to the function. That means along a indifference curve, whatever point a consumer choose, he will gain the same level of satisfaction. Now, the basis of drawing a indifference curve is the indifference schedule. Now, whenever you are talking about schedule, it implies the various combination of these two goods. So, indifference curve is drawn on the basis of indifference schedule and indifference schedule is nothing but combination of various commodities which yield the same level of satisfaction to the consumer. Now, another concept is also there, indifference map. Now, what is indifference map? Indifference map shows all the indifference curve which rank the preference of the consumer. So, when as a rational consumer, a consumer always try to attain or move to a higher indifference curve because it will give them more level of satisfaction provided his income. I will discuss this later. Uh, next, we will discuss about the assumption of the indifference curve. Now, in any social science, whether it is economics or political science, the theories are basically based on certain assumptions. 
Now the theory is valid only assumptions are fulfilled. So indifference curve is not an exception. It is also based on certain assumptions. Now we will discuss about the assumptions of indifference curve factor. The first assumption is that utility can be me measured ordinarily. That means, as I have already told you, that they have reject the concept of cardinal utility, but they are of the view that although utility cannot be measured cardinally, but it is possible to measure utility ordinarily. Now, the second assumption is that the consumer is rational. Now, it is a you know common assumption for most of the theories, or you can say all the theories of uh, economies that the consumer is assumed to be rational. So that means the consumer must behave in a rational way. It implies that given his income and given the prices of the two commodities, consumer will always try to attain the highest level of satisfaction by distributing his or her income in different commodities. Next assumption is additive utility. That means utility can be added. And the total utility of a consumer is the addition of utility he enjoy by consuming different commodities. In other words, the quantities of commodities that is consumed determines the total utility of the consumer. Next, consistency of sources. Means a consumer must be consistent in his sources. The source of the consumer is consistent in the sense that if he or she chooses combination A over B, in any one period, that means he or she will not choose B over A in another period. Symbolically, if A is greater than B in one situation, it must be applicable to all other situations also. Next, transitivity of consumer source. It implies that if a consumer prefer combination A over combination B and combination B over combination C, then the consumer must prefer combination A over combination C. That means if A is greater than B and B is greater than C, then A must be greater than C. So these are basically the properties of the indifference. Basically, the assumptions of the indifference curve. Now, the properties of the indifference curve. What are the basic properties of the? The first property of indifference curve is that indifference curves are downward sloping towards the right. Why it happens? Because the consumer chooses to move along an indifference curve, then he or she has to sacrifice some units of one good to obtain an additional unit of other good. In other words, when a consumer moves from one point to another point on an indifference curve, he has to sacrifice the one unit of a commodity to gain another unit of that particular commodity. And as a result, indifference curve is always downward sloping and negatively sloped. The next properties of indifference curve is that indifference curve are convex to the origin. The convexity of the indifference curve is basically due to the working of the principle of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. Now, what is marginal rate of substitution? Marginal rate of substitution means the rate at which one commodity can be substituted for another. Suppose if I'm saying that if a consumer consuming say two commodities, commodity X and commodity Y. Now, consumer wants to increase the consumption of commodity X and he wants to reduce the con 
consumption of commodity. Now, suppose to gain an additional unit of commodity X, if the consumer has to sacrifice four units of commodity Y, then marginal rate of substitutions is equal to four. So this is known as marginal rate of substitution. It implies the rate at which one commodity can be substituted for another. Now the indifference curve is convex because the diminishing rate of marginal rate of substitution. And this is obvious because when a consumer substitute one commodity for another, then the rate of substitutability gradually declines. Next, the properties of indifference curve is that the indifference curve cannot intersect. This is another important property of indifference curve. That means no indifference curve intersect. This means that only one indifference curve can pass through a point of indifference. Now, if two indifference curves intersect with one another, that will give contradictory results. Then the point of intersection will give contradictory results because the point of intersection will be on two indifference curves. Now, a higher level of indifference curve must give higher level of satisfaction compared to a lower level of indifference curve. Now, if the indifference curve intersect one another, then that then a higher level of indifference curve may not give higher level of satisfaction than the lower level of indifference curve, which is not possible. That is why indifference curve cannot intersect each other. And last but not the least, properties of indifference curve with this, the indifference curve cannot touch each other. It is almost same to the property number three. Now, we have already discussed about the assumptions of indifference curve and the properties of indifference curve. Now, we are in a position to explain consumers equilibrium with the technique of indifference curve. Now, in this section, we will discuss about the equilibrium of a consumer using the indifference curve approach. Now, to derive the consumer's equilibrium under indifference curve approach, what we have to do, we have to explain the indifference curve along with budget. Now, what is budget line? A budget line is an important concept in the indifference curve. It is defined as the various combination of the two commodities that a consumer can consume given the income and price of the two commodities. Now, a budget line is drawn on the basis of the income of the consumer and prices of the two commodities. Now, the slope of the budget line is nothing but the ratio of the prices of the two commodities. And the slope of the indifference curve is given by the marginal rate of substitution as I have discussed, already discussed. Now, a consumer is in equilibrium when the slope of the indifference curve is equal to slope of the budget line. In other words, when the budget line is tangent to the indifference curve, then the consumer is in. Now, in the diagram, as, as we have seen, that a consumer will always try to move to a high indifference curve, say IC3, but he is not able to do so because he has limited income. And he will not restrict himself in IC1 because that will give him the least level of satisfaction. So as a result, the consumer will be in equilibrium at point E where the, where the budget line is tangent to the indifference term. Thus, given the budget line, the consumer would like to maximize his satisfaction by climbing on the high.
highest in difference curve. Next, we will talk about the limitation of the indifference curve technique. Although indifference curve technique is assumed to be superior as compared to uh, cardinal utility approach, but it has lots of limitations. The first limitation of indifference curve technique is that the indifference curve technique does not tell us anything new and it is considered to be a old wine in a new bottle. That means the indifference curve explain whatever already explained by the cardinal utility analysis. They have only using a different technique. The second assumption or second limitation of indifference curve is that it assumes that the consumer is very familiar with the entire preference situ, which is actually not the case in real life. It is not possible that a consumer is always familiar with the entire preference situ. Another limitation of indifference curve is that the technique can be efficiently applied only in case of two commodities. Once more than two commodities are there, the analysis becomes complete. So these are basically limitation of indifference curve. So in this virtual class or in this online class, Initially, we have talked about the ordinal utility analysis, why ordinal utility analysis is considered to be superior to cardinal utility analysis. Next, we discussed about indifference curve and indifference schedule, then indifference map. Then we talk about the assumption of indifference curve, then properties of indifference curve. Then we try to see how the consumer is in equilibrium by applying the technique of indifference curve and budget line. So I hope from this class you got some ideas about the indifference curve technique. So thank you for attending this class. Thank you.